buongiorno and welcome to another episode of our Rome Talks. Today I'm pleased to introduce you Carlo Alberto Pratesi. Buongiorno Buon. Carlo Alberto. Buongiorno. And welcome to the University of Arkansas Rome Center. Carlo Alberto is a professor at Roma 3 University, one of the three public universities here in Rome. Uh, you are also a consultant uh, for many large uh, Italian and international companies, uh, specifically uh, with regards to sustainability and food. You are also a member of the scientific uh, um, board of WWF Italy and uh, you are also a co-founder and president of the European Institute of Innovation and Sustainability uh, and we had uh, in a previous episode uh, our common friend Andrea who spoke about ACE. So Carlo Alberto, again welcome. Um, why don't we start uh, talking about your, your professional experience, your interest uh, and why you decided to focus on this important topic that is sustainability. Yes. Thank you, Francesco. Yes, well, I started obviously in the last century. <laughs> um, I was graduating uh, um, on, um, on, in business because my, my, all my activity started in university in the business school. So I'm professor of management, but specifically I started with marketing. So I must say I am uh, I was born as a professor of marketing and until the end of last century I was teaching marketing, basic marketing, not only to students, university students, but also as a, a coach and mentor for companies, what we call managerial education. So I was both inside and outside university teaching, teaching marketing, communication, all the classical stuff that usually is considered in, in this topic of marketing. At the end of the, at the beginning of, the, of this century, I, I realized that the teaching marketing was, uh, well, uh, not boring, but a little bit old fashioned because companies were not so much interested in learning how to deal with their market, how to deal with their customers, but uh, um, they were starting being a little bit worried about uh, uh, not sustainability, let's say at the beginning uh, of something that was more uh, related to uh, what was called uh, corporate social responsibility. So companies were starting um, uh, understanding that uh, having a good product, uh, having uh, uh, satisfied consumers and uh, maybe also good results from the financial point of view was not enough there were some threats, some risk coming for the social environment and then environmental envirom environment. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the idea was that a company, to be sure to last, uh, had to avoid any kind of risk. And the risk that were arising, uh, starting from this century, were mainly in the social and environmental uh, environment. So, so the idea was to start putting together marketing and sustainability. Because sustainability means, uh, as I usually say, means last. So having the capacity of lasting, having a company that can last for decades or centuries, why not? But to last decades of cen or centuries, you need to avoid any kind of risk. So we just thought about the risk in the uh, economic environment, in the economic field, but there, are, there were new risk in social and, uh, and, uh, and in environmental impact. So my, my course in the university that was typically only marketing changed its name and the name was before marketing and sustainability. And then I discovered that to become really sustainable, you need a really a big amount of innovation. So it was marketing, innovation, and sustainability. That's the story why my course is marketing, innovation, and sustainability. Today it's considered obvious that innovation and sustainability, and sustainability comes along with marketing. But at that time, we are speaking around more or less 2010, it was a little bit strange to put marketing with sustainability and innovation. But for companies, that was really the task, being sustainable, innovating just to be more sustainable compared to the past. It's very interesting the path that you have just described, which in a certain way is a sort of uh, um, reverse uh, uh, 
than the traditional one. It looks like that you have uh, uh, transferred back to the education, to the academia, to your, your courses, uh, the experience that you have gained working with, uh, with, with companies. Uh, so speaking about that, can you, can you elaborate a little bit more this, this path? Is there any particular example or any company you worked with that uh, helped you in making this new, new transition? Yes, the initial input to uh, create this change from marketing to marketing and sustainability started with a very interesting cooperation that still lasts with Barilla Company. Barilla is the number one company, not only in Italy, but in the world for pasta makers. And Barilla started uh, at the beginning of this century, so in 2009, 2010, to understand that even if pasta can be considered a sustainable product from uh, the environmental point of view because it doesn't use a lot of resources, it has not a very high CO2 impact in terms of you know, climate change and so on. It's also not so expensive, so it, it can be considered a sustainable product. And in, in fact, it's also very good from the nutritional point of view because it is just in the uh, low side, uh, low part of the, um, the uh, nutritional pyramid, mm -hmm. no? Mediterranean diet. It's all, well, it was a good product. But at the same time, they knew that they had to improve because the competition was high and they were also interested, that's funny, uh, in the American um, uh, market and dealing with big dealers in uh, in US, uh, starting from Walmart, Walmart started asking all the suppliers to demonstrate that they were doing something good from the sustainable point of view. So Barilla says, okay, we are sustainable, but inside our category of pasta makers, at that moment, we cannot say that they were more sustainable than others. So they started to say, okay, we have to change something just to demonstrate that we are better than others. And they studied the environmental impact of pasta in all the life cycle. So starting from growing crops in the field until the end. And they saw and they demonstrate that the higher impact for pasta is in the first side of the value chain. Mm. So in the agricultural side. Mm. When you produce crop wheat for pasta, you produce uh, uh, CO2 and you have, uh, you, know, you have a water footprint, carbon footprint, and so on. So they started, uh, and I, I was considered part of this team, to understand how to uh, cooperate with farmers to reduce, uh, to reduce the CO2 impact of, uh, of uh, their activity. And that was made, and this is very interesting, not reducing uh, something or going back to the old way of farming, but introducing a lot of innovation, drones, devices to, um, to detect exactly the information that the farmer has to know, just to know when to put water, when to put fertilizer, when to do some typical activity of, uh, of agriculture. So, innovation on field to reduce the environmental impact of farming. This was done in a so good way that Barilla could demonstrate after some years that they reduced 30% their impact. And so now we can say that inside the category of pasta makers, uh, Barilla can be even considered the best in terms of, uh, of sustainability. Well, all this uh, history was for me very, very interesting because as you know, that was something that was just at the beginning, mm -hmm. not, not so many consumers or retailers were interested on sustainable food. Now it's absolutely a uh, number one topic. And if you have started 10 years ago in innovating to reduce your environmental impact, now you can say, I've done my homework. And uh, other producer uh, started maybe some years later. And so at the end, they have a gap from uh, between them and, um, and the leader. So if I have to say who started, I must say that probably Barilla helped me a lot in doing that. And then other big uh, uh, food companies uh, started the same kind of path. Uh, I can say, for instance, Danone, Danone in Italy. 
uh, or uh, uh, in the retailer uh, in the retailer um, environment also big re Italian retailers like like Coop started exactly the same process um, measure of our impact and innovation to reduce it as much as uh, as we can if we are, I'm speaking a lot about food, it is because in Italy, the food industry is advanced mm -hmm. more than other industries that have not much to teach to other countries. But Italy in the food sector is a bit considered the best in class around the world. So what we do in Italy, or what the Italian food companies are doing in Italy can be considered in many cases a case study to, uh, or a benchmark to, to, to be used also from companies uh, abroad. And, and you say this because I understand that you have an experience uh, on uh, several companies. I mean, you, you, I know that you've been working also with multinationals. Yes. So uh, can you, in a really, in, 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 in one minute, can you tell me from your perspective if there is a difference between Italian companies and international companies towards this idea of sustainability? You always see it at the same way. Yes. Well, there is, I don't think there is a, a strong uh, difference um, in terms of Italian or US or others. Uh, yes, of course, I just told you that maybe in the food area we are a little bit more advanced. But what is a big difference is the, di uh, is the difference between uh, big multinational, public owned, and uh, big family companies. Mm. Because when a company is family owned, it has usually, not always, but usually, a long term approach, uh, long range planning. Because if the company belongs to a family, the owner would like to know that is son and the son of his son and the son of his son of his son will uh, inherit, uh, inherit uh, a company that's still alive, that is still strong, that is still uh, safe uh, and... Uh, and uh, in, in good health. In good health, exactly. And so for them, uh, it's not so funny, it's not so strange to make plans that will have their impact in maybe 20 or 30 years. If you are a public-owned company, this kind of long-term uh, business or long-term uh, uh, goals are a little bit more difficult to explain to uh, shareholders mm. that usually have a little bit more financial approach. So I invested in this company and I would like to know that after maybe not some months, but at least few years, I can have a value. Some of the investment that have to be done to become more sustainable typically don't have a a return on investment in maybe one or two years. Yeah. Sometimes the return is in 10 years. Okay. So only a family owned company can, uh, let's say, uh, be so patient to wait for 10 years uh, the, 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 the result. In this case, as Italy has a lot of uh, family business company, uh, this can, could be a little difference. Yeah, I was, I was ab about to say Italy is characterized by this uh, a uh, large number of uh, family-owned companies. Carlo Alberto, let's go back to the, the, the university and your work as an educator. I know that you are a, a, a co-founder uh, of a very interesting program uh, called DOC3 uh, with the, the University of Roma 3. And I know that a few, few days ago you have completed, I think, the third edition. Um, can you speak about this interesting program? Uh, what it is and how the pandemic has influenced it. Yes. Well, some time ago, I was wondering uh, how to um, help our students to become more entrepreneurial. In Italy, entrepreneurship is considered something that you have to, to improve uh, if you don't have a, a normal, uh, let's say, uh, job uh, in, a, in, a, in a big company or a, in the public administration. Um, but uh, starting from 10 years ago, more or less, all the universities in the world wanted to improve the capacity of their students to become more entrepreneurial and even more innov innovative. Mm. Uh, so uh, to create startups, for, in for instance, to, to translate what they have learned in terms of skills and know-how 
uh, a knowledge in, uh, in, in a new company, in a new innovative company. And what I learned uh, going around uh, in uh, different others' uh, uh, university is that the first rule to let uh, uh, students become more innovative is to let them cooperate among uh, uh, them putting together students of different uh, uh, faculties, of different, uh, of different uh, courses and uh, disciplines. So if you, have, if you study biology and you only deal with biologists, it's very difficult to create something new, to have an idea or to become entrepreneurial. And the same is if you just are among students of marketing or computer science. But if you put a biologist with computer science students and maybe marketing students together, they can create something new and very interesting. Uh, and so I, I tried to, 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 to do this uh, in uh, Roma 3 University. So first of all, I convinced my colleague from computer science, I was from marketing department, I convinced my uh, colleague to computer science to put their students with my students, and then other colleagues from mathematics uh, or even law or uh, philosophy, and we started to create this big batch of students, typically around 100 that we select, uh, and asking them to work together in teams of four, where in the team, of course, not more than two can become from the same uh, uh, discipline, and trying to invent something and to create a, 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 an idea of startups. To do the thing even more innovative and more uh, in, you know, uh, interesting, we also invited students from other universities, so not only Roma 3, but other universities in Rome and not only. So the team was really, really, the diversity inside the group was really, really, really high. And so we started and some startup uh, arise from this program and the program was replicated several years with, the, I must say, very good results because uh, <coughs> diversity and uh, uh, willing to create something new are the drivers to let the young people invent their future and not only wait to have some company that will hire them. Very interesting. I know that this is a very successful program and so congratulations on that. Um, you, you, you mentioned the word startup. Uh, so my understanding is that the goal of a program like this is to, again, give the students, the Italian students, the chance to, to develop their, their own startups. And when we talk about startups uh, in Italy, we immediately think of the United States, uh, Israel, other countries where this attitude towards innovation is more, it's more uh, shall we say, um, defined and even encouraged. So from your perspective of an Italian professor dealing with Italian students, now you mentioned something uh, in your previous uh, um, answer, w where can we do innovation? Can we achieve the same results uh, in Italy in this field? Uh, can our students, can I say, compete uh, with others around the world? Or do you think that we're still, I don't know, behind or anchored to a different model? Um, well, this is a very nice question. And uh, as, you, as, as you know, and you can imagine, Italy is more known to be uh, traditional, classical. You can see also the, the place where we are now reminds more the past than the future. But the problem is not that Italian people are not innovative or not creative. We are, we are as much all the others. Maybe in some cases even better if you think into fashion or design or furniture. We can do really things that are innovative. But what is different between us and the others it's that uh, the Italian families, and specifically Italian moms, are not so happy if a student stay, say of if their children say, mom, I've decided I want to become an entrepreneur, I want to create a startup. This is something that maybe is considered very a good news for, a, for a, a mom from Israel or Silicon Valley or whatever, maybe Arkansas. But for the typical Italian family, having a, a child that wants to become an entrepreneur is not a good news. It, it's something that is 
second best, maybe. Probably the mom will say to his children or to his, to his child, okay, you can do entrepreneur, but be sure before that you don't have uh, other opportunities to work with maybe a big company or, or somewhere else. So what we are trying to change um, is the a social acceptance of entrepreneurship as something that is not only the second, uh, the second chance or the second best compared to typical other job or professional professionalities, but it's something that can really create value and also can help people to have a nice life. So when we teach our students how to create a startup and we push them to have ideas, business ideas, we also, uh, the best of them, the, 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 those that are more willing to create a startup, we bring them abroad. So we do uh, kind of study tours. Of course, we started in Silicon Valley, but then we went in Israel, we went in Singapore, uh, we've been in New York, and recently we have been in Texas, specifically in Austin. Maybe you know, but Austin has a very, very um, dynamic uh, startup ecosystem. And for our students, more than learning tools, uh, is important to acquire uh, mentality. Mm. And from this point of view, of course, US has something more to tell us because the mentality of the entrepreneurship in US is at the moment higher than what we have in Italy. Yes, thank you, thank you. This is, this is absolutely uh, critical, I would say. Thank you, Carlo Alberto. This was really interesting. Um, our time today is almost over, so I would like to, to ask one more question. Since you mentioned the relationship with other institutions, especially Americans, um, as you know, Roma 3 and the University of Arkansas have a long-lasting relationship that uh, began uh, at the beginning of this century, actually. In 2001, uh, they signed an agreement between the University of Arkansas and Roma 3, which was carried on for several years in, within the School of Architecture. But then, you know, things sometimes change. So now we are back to this idea of, uh, of uh, reactivating this relationship. So from your perspective, being a professor at Roma 3 and knowing that this opportunity exists, uh, where do you see a, pot a possible collaboration between your institution and our institutions? And, and is there anything in particular that you would be interested in um, developing with us in the future? Yes. Well, I'm, I'm sure that number one goal for universities now, universities all over the world, is to let their students understand the challenge of sustainability. Uh, SDG goals, the fact that everybody should invest, students, uh, faculty members, in um, understanding how to address sustainability challenges, climate change and so on. But to, to, to reach some results, we have to innovate. And to innovate in a field that is absolutely global, I mean, uh, there is no boundaries. When you speak about climate change, there are absolutely no boundaries. So it's very difficult to think why, <laughs> no, I mean, it's difficult to explain why the single university should work alone. Of course, they have to cooperate, but on, not only because the goals are global, but also because, as I told you before, to find a new solution, we need diversity, people, diverse that cooperate together. For Italians, not having uh, the ideas on how an, an American student or professor is working uh, or even thinking, it's, um, it's a weakness. We have to understand your market, we have to understand your way of living, and I think that for Americans is the same. They have to know better how Europe live, how you, Europe uh, think, and also European values that in some way are different from the American ones. So at the end, my suggestion is to, of course, carry on the cooperation, even uh, in a deeper way, and trying to uh, put uh, the word sustainability and innovation as a, a driver of this cooperation. So I would like very much if your students and my students cooperate together, maybe on some task, some task or inventing something that 
help the world uh, doing better in terms of sustainability, bringing from Italian point uh, of view, maybe our strengths that are food, and uh, if some uh, uh, professors or uh, Arkansas students are interested on food, of course, Italian students and professors can help them in create a better innovation, but not only, also in, in, other, in other areas. So if uh, we, we go on in this cooperation, my first uh, goal is to do a, a business trip or an academic trip uh, to your uh, university. To, to start knowing each other better, because when you know each other better, of course, uh, ideas easily arise, and the way to implement uh, the uh, what I, I, I just tell, I just told, uh, it's uh, it's certainly it's certainly better. Thank you, thank you very much, and absolutely, we will make it happen. Uh, as you know, Northwest Arkansas. It's a very interesting part of the United States. Uh, it's um, one of the fastest growing districts of the United States. Uh, and so we will definitely make sure that we will carry on this, uh, this opportunity. Because just to complete, you, you said something very important about cooperation. And I think that the pandemic has proven. I mean, we were able to face this incredible uh, um, global issue no as 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 a putting putting together all the minds around the world you know we are still dealing with it in these days but we are now having you know the, the access to the vaccine and the vaccine was actually produced thanks to the cooperation and to of, the startups uh, and the startups as well so thank you so much carlo alberto uh, we really enjoyed uh, your your uh, your interview and uh, we look forward to continuing this cooperation with you and your uh, institution. Looking forward. Thank you so Thank much. You.